it's coming to a point where we cannot effectively bring you the messages that you seek or even the messages that you need to hear in the same way while still trying to do this healing work that we so necessary i mean like it's so necessary it's necessary for all of us and i feel like there's this misconception out there saying that those of us that are in this position well what healing do you need to do you're already healed right you're doing this you're you're reading and, and you're channeling and you're healing all of us so you've got to be healed too not necessarily we are on this healing journey together Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So, this is going to be your general energy reading for your day, for your moment, whenever you are guided to watch this reading, then that's most likely the message that's for you at that moment. But please keep in mind that this is a general reading and this is a timeless reading, okay? So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. And also, um, this can resonate for you at any time, yeah? So just because it may not necessarily resonate right now or may not necessarily make sense right now, it most likely will near in the future, yes? So welcome to a brand new week. It is Monday. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. I hope you had a good weekend. I hope you have an excellent week ahead. I do need to tell you, this is going to be a crazy week for me. I mean, yes. Last week was a crazy week also. Um, it was my birthday last week, and it also, I, like, I share a birthday month with a ton of other people that are in this friends group that I have here in Puerto Rico. And so last week was just like, well, from Thursday on, it was just one big celebration for all of us. Um, unfortunately, I was not able to get the Instagram live reading up on YouTube over the weekend because I unfortunately deleted it without even thinking about it at one point um i mean i was so wrapped up in the energies of the week and then i was also i ended up doing a bunch of in-person readings for people here on the island and i needed to record it for them and i needed to make space on my phone and i wasn't thinking and i completely de deleted the video so i am so sorry for all of you that were expecting to be able to see that instagram live video this weekend here on youtube I'm sorry, I deleted it. It's totally my fault. It is still available, but it's on Instagram. And so I'm assuming that some of the people that really wanted to see it here on uh, on YouTube don't have access to Instagram or are not on Instagram. And for that, I apologize. Uh, but it happened. I can't take it back now. Um, but also, this is going to be a crazy week for me coming up because I'm traveling this week. And I'm not going to disclose where I'm going. It's a big surprise for a certain individual, and I'm that's all I'm gonna say. So I'm um I already feel like I've said too much. Um <laughs> but anyway, so I'm gonna be traveling this week, so I'm doing as much as I absolutely possibly can, but I also feel like I need to allow this week to just be what it is. I'm not going to put too many stipulations on myself. I have one thing that is a, I have one thing to do that is a priority and I know that and I'm going to be, and I'm going to make sure I do that as soon as possible. But other than that, I'm going to do my best to keep up with morning coffee. Um, but just bear with me this week. It's going to be, it's, I'm, I'm really excited, but like also I need to be realistic. And also, we also we need to talk about this. We all really need to be realistic right now with the energies of the certain of our situations, with the energies for all of us that are going on. There are quite a few of us in this position right now as readers, as channelers, as guides that are going through some real major changes. And for many of us, it's causing us to pull back from the amount of readings that we do, from the amount of content that we provide to the collective right now. I, I will speak for myself personally in terms of the fact that I know a big shift is coming. I'm, I'm seeing it start to take shape. So like you remember the, the morning coffee reading I did, I think it was about two weeks ago. I don't think it was last week. I think it was the week before, but it was the reading titled, It's Starting to Take Shape. That's literally happening in my life right now. I'm starting to recognize how I am changing and evolving as a reader and a guide, and I'm starting to see a new avenue open up for me. But in order for me to take that avenue, I'm going to need to limit the amount of things that I do 
hear in, in divine conversations as a reader so that I can focus on making this shift so that I can step into um, this new identity. So yesterday, um, yesterday, okay, so yesterday I was planning on doing a, a collective reading for Patreon at least, um, but I ended up I, I, I don't have any food in the house right now, and so I'm not really trying to buy a bunch of food and stock up the fridge because I'm traveling. So I went out for breakfast. That was nice. I had a plan of going out to a store to, you know, pick up some stuff for the trip. Um, but I ended up not having to do that because a friend of mine lent me the thing that I needed. Um, but then I remembered that I had left. Okay, this is going to sound so trivial. And yeah, we're doing story time. So like buckle up, kids. If somebody wants to um, timestamp, you're more than welcome to. Uh, but also, you might want to hear some of what I'm saying here. But anyway, I so after breakfast, um, I realized that I had left something uh, that I had bought at my friend Lindsay's house because uh, she had a party on Saturday. And so for Saturday, I went out to go get some, some stuff, and I was at the store, and I stumbled upon Pecorino Romano cheese. You guys, this is going to sound so fucking trivial, but <laughs> I've, I finally, after being here for almost a year, I finally found Pecorino Romano cheese. And I was like, holy shit, I cannot wait until I get back to try and find this again. I'm buying it now and I'll just, I'll take it with me to Lindsay's and then I'll just take it home. Well, I didn't take it home. I completely forgot to take it home. And so yesterday I went back to go get it. And so we ended up hanging out. Um, you know, we cracked a few beers you know, we smoked a little weed and she was like, hey, can you do a reading for me? I was like, fuck yeah, I can do a reading for you. And so we ended up hanging out for quite a few hours. Um, and my original intention was to go get my cheese, but then, you know, we hung out, we had our thing. I drove home, I walked into my apartment and I said, Eric, you forgot the fucking cheese. Holy shit, I left that fucking cheese in her fridge. That's fine. But um, the session that we had yesterday was awesome and it helped me to come to a realization it was the moment the first moment that i admitted to myself not only just to myself not only did i say it out loud to myself but i also confidently said it to someone else in a way that's like no this is definite this is actually happening and what's happening is i'm finding that this whole shift this whole energy that we're going through right now is helping me step into my next identity because i am not the person that i was when i started divine conversations three years ago you guys it's been three years and it literally feels like a moment where i am we'll say a snake shedding its skin or a lizard shedding its skin. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm not saying that I'm a snake in the grass or that I'm reptilian or anything, but I am saying like I'm changing. I'm shedding my old skin. If you want to say it a different way, this is me coming out of the cocoon and, and emerging as a butterfly. But even when a butterfly emerges, they they can't just come out and pop out of the cocoon and just start flying. They have to rest a little bit. They have to give their wings time to dry and they need to allow their wings to fill up with blood so that they can fly. So, and this is all similar to that shift that we experienced that's that we've been experiencing or how we've been describing it as um, going through uh, the fall winter or feminine season where things die out and new seeds are planted and now we're in the spring where seeds are starting to grow flowers are starting to bloom um, you know the, the the plants are starting to the seedlings are starting to emerge from underneath the earth okay now that's not going to look the same for everybody we're all on different timelines time is an illusion and this all has everything to do with where you are in your journey and how quickly you can go with this uh, expansion and ascension, right? But that's what we're going through right now. And so many of us as readers are really being challenged by this right now. So please, 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 we beg you, please be patient with us. Please stop demanding things from us, okay? Please stop demanding things from us. I know I'm not getting that personally. I mean, I've had to. I've had a few people pop into the to the comments section asking where the the monthly May readings are or if I'm going to do the monthly May readings. So I guess those are people that either don't watch morning coffee regularly or kind of miss the message. But no, I'm not planning on doing monthly readings for May. Um, as of right now, I don't know. There was a, there was a moment in my mind where I was kind of like. 
I kind of feel like I want to do maybe like a, 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 a mid-month check-in for like the, the elements. But with how crazy these energies are right now and how unpredictable the flow is right now, I don't want to make any promises there. Like I don't like the idea and I don't like the fact that I've done it. But like saying I want to do something and then either not following through with it or ending up not being able to follow through with it, I don't like that. I really don't like that. Um, and to me, it, it, it seems to, I feel like there are a good amount of people out there that kind of find that to be a break of trust. Like you say one thing, but you don't really follow through with it. I'm sorry for that. But like I've got, I'm getting to the point right now where it's like, look, I can't make any promises. I know I'm going to be here when I can be here, when it's appropriate to be here, but things are shifting right now. So please, you have to, have to, have to bear with us. I mean, my day yesterday is a prime example of it. I had a plan of what it was, what it is I wanted to do yesterday, and I didn't expect to, you know, spend three, four hours at Lindsay's house yesterday, you know, completely vibing, totally connecting, and having a personal, important personal moment with her, um, as especially since she's a new addition to our friends group, right? I didn't expect, I just totally expected to go down there, grab my cheese, maybe hang out for five, ten minutes. Three hours later, I was on my way home. So, and that completely took away my chances of doing a collective reading. But I ended up doing a reading yesterday. You know what I mean? So you just got to go with the flow. You got to roll with the punches. I mean, I'm not completely going away. But right now, things are fairly limited. So, there's that. Um... I do, before we move forward, I do want to give a shout out to my dear, dear friend, Betsy of Fearless Intuition. Betsy, I love you so much. I'm praying for you. We are all here for you. Um, Betsy is going through an intense process of healing right now. Uh, and I... I hope, I hope this doesn't upset you, Betsy, but I'm kind of putting you on blast here right now because there is a GoFundMe available to help with um, funds for her time in her experience right now. Um, that can be found in the description box below. If you are not familiar with Betsy, it, um, I know many of you here on the channel connected with me through Betsy. Many of you already know of Betsy. And many of you may, because of that, many of you may already know what she's going through. If you don't know what she's going through right now, check her out on Instagram, um, uh, at Fearless Intuition. Um, I believe she's shutting down her Facebook page, so you might still be able to get some information from Facebook. I mean, I don't know if she's completely shutting it down, but I think she's at least not going to be posting there anymore, or at least for an extended amount of time. Uh, again, uh, fearless Intuition on uh, Facebook. Also, the link to the GoFundMe is can be found in the description box of this video. Anything that you can donate would be greatly appreciated. Betsy, I love you so much and I'm about to cry. Um, Betsy was uh, the first person... Well, she's not the first person, but she is someone that I connected with before I started my channel and I did a reading, she did a reading for me in which, you know, I was trying to figure out my career, where I was going at the time. I knew I wanted to start a YouTube channel, but I didn't know that it was going to be a, a card reading channel. Um, and she helped, I remember the reading that she did for me said it, the sun came out and she was like, whatever it is you're about to do, Eric, it's going to be really good. And fast forward three years later and here we are. Um, Betsy, I love you so much. I need to pause for this. Okay, I'm legit crying. Um, but part of, part of what's making me so upset is the realization of how extreme of a challenge or how extreme the challenges are or they become when you're moving out of your light working energy. Like, I know, from, I, and uh, we all watch Queen Cup here, right? So we know, we've heard her sit, talk about the difference between a light worker and a dark worker and how people are um, 
people that once really identified with the light working aspect of things are now kind of shifting into that polarity of the dark work. And in some cases, it's going so extreme as for our bodies to manifest certain illnesses that completely take us out of commission. But that's so that we can continue to work on our healing. And it's coming to a point where we, as are these channels, as these readers, as these guides, we cannot effectively bring you the messages that you seek or even the messages that you need to hear in the same way while still trying to do this healing work that we so necessary i mean like it's so necessary it's necessary for all of us and i feel like there's this misconception out there saying that those of us that are in this position well what healing do you need to do you're already healed right you're doing this you're you're reading and, and you're channeling and you're healing all of us so you've got to be healed too not necessarily we are on this healing journey together we are humans, just like human beings, just like you, having these physical experiences, these spiritual beings having these physical experiences just like you are. And yes, we have the extra ability to be able to channel certain things for you and help guide you on your path, but sometimes we need to take the time for ourselves. So please, please stop demanding things of us, okay? We love you. But we're human too. <laughs> okay. So. With that said. Let's change gears here. I went. Okay. So Lindsay's party on Saturday. We ended up at the beach. And y'all. I got eaten up by sand flies or sand fleas or something like that. I don't know, whatever, but like, I'm not happy about it. I woke up at one in the morning, itchy as fuck. Okay, anyway, let's get into this. So uh, today we're going with the Vice Versa deck as our main deck, and then we will be using the Witches to Rope for uh, clarification, and then Oracle Guidance will come from something. Yes? Okay, excellent. Let's get into this, kids, and see what messages we have for today. Here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, romances, relationships, places in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, guys. Uh, yeah, five shuffles. One. This is two. This is three. Here we go, y'all. <clears throat> so, what do we have going on for today? What messages do we have for the collective? Three, two, one. Wow. So this is actually directly reflecting what I was thinking when I started talking about the situ uh, about Betsy and you know and what really what really like I had I already knew 
I had come across some of the, sh uh, the information that she had shared about um, the challenge she has in front of her right now. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's a cat. I'm sorry guys, hold on a second. Sorry, that was Orion fighting with another cat. Okay, so um, what we have here is we have the Six of Pentacles in reverse, we have the Two of Swords, all right? Uh, and it's the stormy side of the Two of Swords. And this is, like I was saying, this is directly related to what I was talking about with uh, Betsy's situation, but with also like for all of us as readers, for all of us as individuals, regardless as to whether you're a reader or not. Um, right now, it seems like <clears throat> this is a time of chaos. Uh, with this Two of Swords energy, it's this side of the card where we see that this person, this woman is surrounded by a storm, okay? The, the, on the other side of the card, everything is calm, but not here. And we see her with her eyes closed, with her, a blindfold, uh, blindfold on, balancing these two swords between herself. And to me, this is needing to take time to settle in through the chaos, not really being able to give much right now the Six of Pentacles in reverse, and we have been talking about that. I know I'm. it sounds like I'm speaking as if the main audience here for Morning Coffee has been demanding in this way, and I know that's not the case, but that's an element, that's what is coming through in the collective, and I kind of feel like I'm not trying to say that I'm speaking for, on behalf of the reader community, but as a reader, I mean, I, I need to I need to say this. I need to be able to set this boundary for myself as well. But like part of what is hitting me so hard uh, with my friend Betsy is the fact that like I came across a message that she posted yesterday saying, stop coming into my, into my DMs and demanding free content from me. I am going through a period of healing. It's like there's this, it's like there's this disconnect. Like I said, it's like there's this feeling like, well, you're a reader. You should have been healed already. Like you're here healing me. You should like, what do you mean? You're not like, where are you? Where, why are you not doing? Where's my reading? Like, no, no, guys, no, we are, we're, we're all dealing with this right now. Two of swords and the six of pentacles in reverse. The two of swords is upright. This is a stormy time. This is a chaotic time, but it's also a time of great change. The overall energy we have here is the Hermit and the Three of Wands. So in this time, in this period of kind of being here, kind of being blocked off, not really having that much to give, okay? This is a time for you to settle in to your new path. This is a time for you to be going within and really focusing on yourself, focusing on your healing, focusing on what really truly resonates for you at this time and focusing on how that's going to affect the path that you're walking on. And these are times, there are times, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, when I first saw these cards come out, one of the feelings that I got very strongly, one of the messages that I got very strongly was, for lack of a better term, this is gonna sound really harsh, but this is how it came through. You're on your own. You're not on your own, okay? Let's just say that, you're not, completely alone. You definitely have your guides, you have God source creator, you have your ancestors, uh, your spirit animals, whomever it is, your team, you definitely have your team. And you definitely have people like me that are here to read, but it's not necessarily going to be as frequent as you may want it to. And this is not just a message for this time. This is, a, this is something that we all need to settle into and need to understand. There, there is a danger when it comes to the Tarot community in which and I've, I've been there too. I've, I've gotten sucked into the rabbit hole and needed to literally claw my way out. But there are times where you're not going to be able to get the guidance that you might seek from outside sources like me, myself, or other people in this position. Sometimes the guidance that you need is going to come from you disconnecting, not trying to give, or not like like giving to yourself even, the Six of Pentacles can represent that, right, in reverse. Disconnecting and going within and following through with what is guided, with, with the guidance that's coming in from within you, okay? There are going to be times where I can't give you the answers. There, like, there have been moments in the past month so far in which 
I like it happened last week. I was trying, I sat down to do morning coffee one day and the message literally did not come through. It was completely blank. Even though cards flew out on the table, it was complete. I was completely blank. Couldn't hear a thing. And so I was guided to say the message is to go within, right? To find the healing, to find the connection with yourself so that you can figure out or get the message that you need in that moment. And I don't want this to sound like I'm yelling at anybody. I'm not mad. I'm not. It's just I'm concerned. And this is the message that's coming through at this point. Okay. Um, from this deck. All right. I'm going to pull one more from this deck here and see what else do we have for the collective right now. Yep. This is good. Oh, 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 Jesus Christ. <sighs> All right. Yeah, I'm going to take this. This is a lot of cards, you guys, but I'm going to take it. You have the Hermit is still on the bottom of the deck or as an overall energy, but it is the reverse side of it now. Okay. And to me, this side of the card represents um, having gone through that period of self-discovery and finding your inner light and now figure and now figuring out or choosing how you're going to move forward with it. On the other side of the deck, you do have the two of wands now. No, 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 I'm sorry. It's still the three of wands. It's still the three of wands. But this is, this, this might be a little bit off in the future, moving forward a little bit. Um, but this is the moment where you decide, you have gone within, you're understanding a little bit more, and now you decide how you want to proceed with the three of wands here. Okay. What else has come out? A lot of shit. Uh, first card out was the Ten of Swords, and that's great. Ten of Swords to the Three of Swords. That's great. But then we had the Tower in reverse with the King of Swords in reverse. So unfortunately, does, this does kind of feel like one of those moments where um, the universe is coming in to set things straight for you. The universe is creating a Tower moment, not just for, you, for, for us in some way, because there was there's some sort of energy of not seeing something clearly not being objective enough not being okay in some cases not being rational enough okay what is that all connected to all of this shit right here good lord what does this mean bear with me you guys Okay, well, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward, actually. We'll start here. We have the Queen of Cups, the Four of Wands, the World, the High Priestess, and the Hierophant, okay? All right, so first of all, what this is saying to me here is what's happening is with the Queen of Cups here, you're needing to face your emotions. I just heard also face your fears, but I don't feel like it's really going to be that hard. If some of you, if, if somebody here is having trouble really facing their fears, I feel like that's a, that's conditioning from the past that is working on being eradicated here, okay? These fears, this irrational thought, King of Swords in reverse and the Tower in reverse, there, there is some, some of you here or somebody here is being forced to take something down. But this has been facilitated by the completion of the balance between masculine and feminine energy within you, or at least this is facilitated by a greater representation of the balance of masculine and feminine energy within you. It is also, the, the High Priestess and the Hierophant here are representing the lessons. The Hierophant representing the physical 3D lessons, the High Priestess representing the higher awareness, the higher universal infinite energies and infinite lessons. Also, the High Priestess I'm feeling it's like we're rising up from the Hierophant energy into the High Priestess energy, and that's where you're really being guided to get in tune with your intuition. So if you're finding that you're really seeking, you're in those moments where you're really seeking a message from outside of you or from a reader or something, and it's not coming through, then that's one of, and it, it, like you're not finding what you need or you're, the universe isn't helping you align with that, then that's one of those moments where you really need to focus on going within and trying to listen to what your heart or your intuition are telling you. Because the answers will be made available to you should you be open to them, okay? But 
relying on, I know, and this sounds like so counterproductive for me as a reader, like this feels like this could be, you know, uh, giving a shiv to my own business, but like at the same time, I, I have to create those boundaries. Because if I continue to allow myself to be drained like this, I'm not going to have anything to give, right? And people like me are not here to give you all the answers. We're here to help, yes. We're here to facilitate things, yes. But ultimately there is going to be a point where you're gonna to have to fly on your own, okay? What else do we have here? Well, we have some good stuff. We have some real good shit. We have the sun with the star, you also have that with the Six of Cups and the Knight of Swords, okay? So illumination and healing and positivity are coming through, yes. But what's necessary here, this necessary part of your path, what's connected to going within, finding more of your inner light, doing some more deep soul searching, and then understanding how it is, or choosing or figuring out how it is you're going to proceed from here, you're going to have to reconcile with the past. Six of Cups and the Knight of Swords. And there isn't, an, uh, there is no amount of readings in the world that you could get from an external individual that will truly be able to provide you with the power necessary to reconcile with the past. But the thing about that is you don't need it to come from us. You have that power within you. But you're going to have to do it. You're going to have to take the reins for yourself at certain points. I'm not saying that we're all going completely away like we hate you, you're, we're done here, screw you. No. No. We love you. And we want to help. But there are certain times in which we really can only do so much. And the rest needs to be on you. I, I'm probably going to lose a, quite a few people after this reading, but you know, part of this shift that I've been going through has been me really disconnecting to the point where like I, I barely over the last few days, I have made it a point to not check my, the, the YouTube studio app. I used to be I, I mean, I, I I used to be like me and that app were connected at the hip. I would I would check it constantly. It was an obsessive thing, and part of this change that I've been going through has been guiding me, pushing me to stop looking for so much validation in that way, and just turn within and figure out where it is I'm going next. Knowing that I continue, I do want to continue to be a reader, an energy worker, a healer, a guide but needing to redefine how I do that. Because I am not, like I said earlier, I am not the same person that I was when I started this. I'm not. And I am lying to myself. I am doing myself a disservice and I'm also doing you a disservice by forcing myself to stay in a pair of shoes walking down my path that no longer fit me. I mean, I'm giving myself blisters. I'm wearing through them shoes. And I don't feel like I'm being the effective channel. I mean, sure, I'm still helping, but there's more to me now than there was in the past. And that's part of the reason why if you're over on Patreon, you've heard me say, and I think I've even heard it, I've said it here, but you've heard me say, I don't even want to do twin flame readings any longer. That's not who I am anymore. Does that mean, do, do, does, does that, mean that I'm not I'm not part of that whole collective or anything. No, I'm not saying that. I still see 144 all the time. But for the way that I, re I see it, the number 144, 144,000 hertz, it's not 100, well, okay, it's a frequency. It's not a number of people. And Queen Cup said this on one of her videos recently, and I had been saying this, I said this a few years ago. Uh, there's no possible way that number 144,000 is only a certain amount of people. There are billions of people on this planet and you really want to tell me that only 144,000 of them are dealing with this energy? Fuck out of here. That is some elitist bullshit that's just trying to, maybe not, maybe, maybe inadvertently though, but maybe not so blatantly, but that literally just creates more division. 
oh, you're not part of this group. You're not part of the 100. There's only 144,000 of us. That's some bullshit. To me, that number is a frequency. And the way I understand it, it's a frequency of unconditional love. So if you're seeing 144, then you are aligning with that vibration and anybody can. But it's, it, but, but see, I've, me personally, I've grown out of that phase. That doesn't mean that I can't help you. That doesn't mean if somebody needs a twin flame reading and blah, 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 or needs some help with that, you damn right, you best believe I'll be able to help you. But catering to that, feeding that monster, uh, no, nope, not doing that no more. Mm -mm. Nope. But see, that's how part, that's how my path is changing and evolving. That's how I'm stepping into a brand new identity. And yeah, it's scary. And I know I feel a lot of you are out there like, holy shit, like, what does this mean for me? Don't worry about it. I'm still going to be here. It's just the way that I channel and the messages that I bring through are probably going to be different from now on. My delivery is going to be the same. My passion is going to be the same. My, my, my personality is going to be the same. That's never going to change, but but the way that I channel and what I channel and how I channel, well, the way, how, whatever, that's all changing. And I just have to go with it. I can't fight it any longer. Nor, nor should you. Because when we do, that's when these tower situations come out. Right? Woof. Okay. Clarity. Um, five shuffles here. One. And I don't even feel like I want to clarify any of the specific cards. This is two. What I'm wanting to do right now is just get a final closing message from the Tarot using a different deck. This is three. And then we'll close out with our Oracle Guidance. This is four. This is five. All right, kids. So closing Oracle, or no, 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 sorry. Uh, closing message from the Tarot here in terms of these energies. Good. Good. So I definitely feel like this part of the collective that either is resonating with this reading or is resonating with me as a reader has successfully come to a point where they can really start to work with uh, masculine energy or feminine energy, whichever one is needed at a given moment, because we've been really working on balancing, harmonizing, and integrating those energies. If you've been following along with me for the last three years, um, maybe it's not conscious within your mind. Maybe you don't really see it that way right now, but that's what we've been working on. And it feels like we're getting really good at it. Okay. Because what's come out here is another representation of the counterparts, just like we had the Hierophant and the High Priestess. Well, we had the Queen of Cups. Now we have the King of Cups, the King of Cups with the Four of Swords and a hidden energy, an energy that came out, a card that came out face down. So it's a bit of a hidden energy, justice. Okay. So what does this mean? Well, what I'm picking up is the King of Cups represents emotional maturity, emotional foundation. Um, uh, it represents the emotional maturity to do what you know is right, even if it's not easy or even if it's unpopular. Um, specifically, though, what I'm getting from the King of Cups and the Four of Swords is there is a need to pull back right now and just like specifically i'm getting i'm getting like hold your tongue i mean the king of cups yeah he he's very emotionally aware and sure he has a lot to say and he's a very emotionally available individual and very passionate and all that but i just feel like this king of cups is sitting back on his throne and not saying a word just staying solid staying sturdy staying grounded Staying in a mindset of 
allowing your heart, Knight of Cups is at the bottom of the deck, to guide you towards what it is you truly want or need to do. I, I, I don't know why, but there is an express feeling with this King of Cups of literally holding his tongue, staying silent. And that could be, for some of you, that could be translating into a situation in which you are a foundational entity for certain people around you, or like you're the rock that certain people around you are kind of clinging to right now. So even like for me, if you want to look at it this way, me being a reader here, having a collective, having a, an audience to speak to on a daily basis, for me, this is representing the situation in which I'm here. I am here for you guys. And I'm holding it down as much as I can, but there isn't much that I have to say right now, or there isn't much that I can say right now because there's so much chaos. King of Cups, Four of Swords, needing to keep ourselves, my, our minds clear, needing to be in a meditative state while justice is being served for us. You may not see it in your life right now, but underneath the surface, the universe is bringing justice to us. Now, this is also a representation of us understanding what, just like what Queen, Queen Cup said in her, I, what was it, the Scorpio full moon reading. Re recognizing what real justice is. Instead of focusing on getting back at somebody for hurting you or whatnot, whatever, uh, or having them get their comeuppance or whatnot, instead saying, you know what, I release that, that that's on you, I'm gonna focus on me. And I'm going to focus on bringing justice in for me. I'm going to focus on aligning with what brings me justice, what brings me the healing that I need, the clarity that I need. And that's not always easy, King of Cups, because people hurt us. Or at least people have hurt us in some pretty nasty ways, too. And it takes a bigger person to look at them and say, I forgive you. I am not in any way, shape, or form wanting to associate with you anymore, but I forgive you, and I release this. But I release this so that I can receive the justice that I'm due. I'm not going to sit here and wish ill upon you. I'm not going to sit here and wish for your business to, to tank or for that new boyfriend or girlfriend to leave you or do the same thing you did to me. No. Nope. I'm going to sit here in my power emotionally strong, emotionally aware, available, um, emotionally aware, and I'm going to allow the universe to bring justice to me. Justice, King of Cups, Four of Swords. Okay. All right. I do want to, okay, so I'm going to do, I'm going to get um, Oracle Guidance to close out this reading from two decks today. I'm going to start with the Oracle of the Angels, and then we're going to close with the Crystal Mandala deck, okay? So three shuffles for each. All right, one. Two. So, what oracle guidance do we have to collect for the collective peace period from this deck? Oracle guidance, please. Messages from the angels in terms of the situation here. Ooh. Okay. Beautiful. So, um... What we have here, okay, at the bottom of the deck is transformation. Card number 38, which boils down to an 11. You then have card number 31, receptivity. Card number 28, angel whispers. And card number 44, believe in dreams. All right, so what this is saying here is, yeah, now is a time to sit back and be receptive. But be receptive to the whispers of your soul, to the whispers of the angels, of your angels, of the guides, of whomever it is that you work with spiritually. You, This is a time for you to sit back and be receptive to the messages that come through naturally through you. Not just me, not just any of your other favorite readers out there. 
but what are the messages that are coming through you? Because you have, we all have the ability to channel. You may not be, you may not be able to have the ability to channel the way I do or the way some other big name readers or channelers do, but you have a connection, a direct connection to source that is available at all times. You have a direct connection to your angels, to your guides that is available at all times. It's just a matter of building that rapport, building that relationship. We are always going to be here, us readers. But if you can fortify yourself with being able to really get the messages that you seek from within, then that's only going to make you stronger. And that's only going to increase the chances of you receiving even more of the guidance that you seek whenever you need it at any given time. Yes? I encourage you. I encourage you to take this time of silence, really, for I mean, shit, right? It's a pretty silent time right now, right? Take this time to be receptive to the whispers from the angels that come directly to you. Yes? Okay. Because... We're transforming, woo, and letting go. Health is also underneath that as well, okay? But this is the big thing, transformation and letting go. Letting go of the past, letting go of the old, letting go of what no longer serves us. Yes? Okay. Final closing message is coming from the Crystal Mandala. Actually, all right, I'm being guided to do five shuffles for this one. Okay. One. Two, three, oops, four, and five. Hmm, the star wanted to come out again. Healing. Healing and great change is what I heard with the start. They wanted to remind you of that. Okay. Closing Oracle Guidance, please. Spirit from the Crystal Mandala for the Collective. Final guidance. Final closing message, please. Final closing message, please. Okay, I'm going to take all of them. It's three more cards. So here we go. First card is... Actually, let's do this in numerical order. First is card number 18, uh, Angel Uziel and Smoky Quartz, Heavenly Mercy. Then we have card number 40, Goddess Sar Sarasvati and Ammonite, From Word to World. And then finally, we have card number 45, Goddess Gaia and Ocean Jasper. Good will. All right. 18. We bring you the gift of heavenly mercy. As you grow spiritually, your energy field becomes more substantial. Your thoughts and actions carry more karmic weight in the world. As your power increases, your ability to do good increases too. Your positive words can have a potent effect on others. So too can the very human moments where you may be having an off day and unintentionally respond to another in a way that is not unconditionally loving. We do not want you to be afraid of becoming powerful. We know that most often you're going to make a positive contribution with your power. We also know that sometimes you will wish you could, quote, undo a choice you have made and its effect. To help you, we offer our karmic, karmic protection where the destructive impact of your actions is softened and the positive effect of your actions is enhanced. As you grow in power and impact, our gift of heavenly mercy will surround you, aligning your actions with divine will and blessing you and all affected by you with divine compassion. What the hell? I was holding up the wrong damn card. Sorry, that was this one. <laughs> Heavenly mercy. 
Sorry about that, you guys. I was holding up the next card, which is from Word to World. And which is funny because that was the first card that came out and then the other two cards came out and I heard, just take them. And I was like, all right, cool, I'll take them. So next, card number 40 from Word to World. <laughs> okay, from Word to World. We bring you the empowerment of Word to World. What you speak of with intention, you shall manifest. You are blessed with the creative power of an open and activated throat chakra. As you release subconscious fear of speaking your truth, memories of being silenced, and claim your true divine voice, your ability to change your world through your intention is amplified. You have the power of divine creation through sound in you. What you wish to create and experience, speak of with joy. And then finally, we have card number 45, Goodwill. We bring you the empowerment of goodwill. There is a type of spiritual power you can co-create, which benefits and protects you whilst mutually empowering others to take their journey and experience divine success. This spiritual power, known as goodwill, is generated by how you feel inside and the attitude recognize I'm sorry and the attitude you cultivate towards others when you know you have value it is easy to recognize the value in another when you feel encouraged by the universe it is easy to encourage others as you put out support encouragement and goodwill for the success of all beings this energy is amplified and returned to you There you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. Um, as of this time tomorrow morning, I am going to be on a plane. So I'm not sure what's going to happen tomorrow, but stay tuned. I love you guys. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee very soon. <laughs> Take care. Bye.